never hurt anybody. I says, you gotta move that chow wagon. And who's gonna make me? I am. Oh, yeah. Uh, pardon me, gentlemen. A, A customer. Seven-course dinner for the price of the tip balloon. Mmm, the red carpet treatment. This is obviously the better beanery. Why, that double-crosser! Hamburger, for which I will gladly pay you Tuesday. One burger coming up. Here's your... Huh? Uh, my specialty today is baked beans. <laughs> I'll have a generous portion, for which I will gladly pay you Tuesday. Chum, one hot steak on a sizzling platter. Ha, 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 ha. 
Very many respiratory diseases. You know what asthma is? We're going to find out. Yeah, it is kind of, uh, you know, a different thing. And we want to make sure if any new anybody that has that, if there's any kind of problem, then first of all, if you treat them with great respect and don't, uh, you know, uh, you got to be very careful of the air around and stuff like that. Hi there, now you are. I'm Bob McCaffrey, Program Director at the Respiratory Disease Association. Yeah. And Jill. And Jill does have asthma. Now, what is this uh, problem? You just basically talk about what's happening. Yes, asthma is a disease that's brought on uh, by allergies sometimes, and it's a spasm of the bronchial passages in the lungs. People have asthma. It's very hard for them to breathe. They get a very breathless, light-headed feeling. Jill can probably tell you a little bit about it. She what, does it what does it feel like to have asthma, honey? What were you going to say? Well, what, what does it sound like? How does it feel again? Say that again. It feels like it's puffing up. Like, uh, how does it, when you have an asthma attack, how does it, what does it sound like? Oh, like you're Can you do it? What happens? What is it like? Like that. Yeah. Is it hard to breathe? And does it hurt? Not much, but it's kind of Well, how do you, how do you get the, you know, how does that thing come on? Is something in the air you breathe, maybe, some kind? Well, you know, with me, it's like, it's like a What are you allergic to? What foods shouldn't you eat? Well, lots of things. Well, for example, chocolate. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Butter, peanuts, almonds. Things like that you're allergic to, and you shouldn't. You shouldn't eat them, right? Because yeah. then you'll have a little attack, right? Do your friends know this? Yes. And they're pretty nice about it, huh? Well, how about if there are some families out there right now who want information, or maybe they're of course, a medical doctor should do yeah. a diagnosis. And that's the, right. They should have consult their doctor. They can also call the Christmas Seal headquarters uh, at 333 5463. Uh, Christmas Seals, uh, Christmas heart Seals. and respiratory disease people, you work with yeah. asthma too. Yes, we do. Many good things, not just TB. That's right. used to be there. Many good right. things. Say, there's something coming up in one of the programs in one of the hospitals now that you can learn about this and the control of asthma. <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, that's right. That's the Family Asthma Program, and we uh, hold classes starting January uh, 10th, which is uh, Wednesday evening. Every Wednesday evening from then till the 28th of February, and uh, it's from 7 to 9 in the evening, and it's for parents and children. Uh, in other words, uh, the parents of children who have asthma and their friends and their teachers. Well, how do you get in, in on this program? What well, you call the number that I gave it, uh, 333. 5463 and ask for information about the family asthma program. And both Jill and her mother and uh, Jill's father have uh, gone through the program and uh, know so, something about so it. So asthma can be controlled and it can be uh, and, uh, used to and uh, maybe possibly not have to do Yes, that's right. And you help them to live with it and help them give them help and uh, maybe help try to, to curb it or correct it. And by taking these courses, they have a summer camp that they're able to go to. And Jill would never have been able to go to summer camp without the plan. It takes certain exercises and everything, and learning uh, how to eat uh, the right foods. And, uh, and yes, the marvelous staff of doctors and nurses there. Yeah. Well, this is one of the things that we get when you buy Christmas seal. When you put that Christmas seal in an envelope and we buy the Christmas seal, you're helping. Thank you. Well, thank you. Right, that number with us, and uh, just in case somebody wants to call the station if they don't remember that number. Again, it was. It's 333-5463, uh, and ask for information on the Family Asthma Program. <laughs> well, say, honey, thank would you do us a favor? Would you? Honey, would you like to introduce our next cartoon for us? I want you to put it in your own words. Now, the cartoon is Yogi Bear. How would you introduce yeah. it? Go ahead. Now, introducing your There we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the home of Colonel Packingham P. Putney, the world's richest man. The Colonel has everything. Double-decker tennis courts, a pool for each foot, dozens of big, shiny cars, with a little car in each big car. Colonel Putney, or Putt-Putt, 
as his friends call him, is also the world's greatest hunter with the world's largest collection of hunting trophies. But Colonel Putt-Putt is not happy. He must have one more trophy to complete his collection. He needs a perfect head of a bear. Yes, the poor Colonel is most unhappy. Egad, I must get a blooming bear head. By a strange coincidence, a perfect bear head is not far away. It belongs to the world's greatest skating bear, Yogi. Yeah, that's me. But with all his fame, Yogi Bear is also very unhappy. Uh oh He went that away! We gotta get that Yogi Bear back! Don't worry, we'll get him! I am scramming out of this creepy circus. Yikes! There he is. That's the bear they're looking for. Hey, come back here, you! Looky, it's Yogi! Go get him, boy! <laughs> Those guys just don't quit. I gotta duck those guys and hounds. Well now, that looks like a cozy hideout. Any old part in the storm, I'll just have a look-see around. There must be a blooming perfect bear head someplace. What was that? Blimey! I'm seeing things. Bears. Skating bears. I'm a sick man. Sick, sick, sick. What's the matter, pal? I need a head. I lend you mine. Ah, <laughs> uh, but I'm using it. Zappity Zow. A perfect bear head. Well, now, uh, I wouldn't say that. But I ain't bad looking for a bear. I ain't half so ugly as I look. <laughs> hey, watch it, will you? You almost blew my head off. You can't. I almost pulled a blooming boo-boo. Well, now, uh, this is more like it, friend. What are you serving, pal? A blinking surprise. Love those blinking surprises. Oh. Whoops. Drop my napkin. Oh. How about that? My favorite goodie. Shish kebab. Uh, how come you want I should uh, take a nap? Nothing like a bit of a nap after dinner, my boy. But uh, it's too early. Chin up. It's later than you think. <laughs> but, but I'm not uh, sleepy. Oh, well. Uh, shall we have another go at it? Uh, uh, hurry up if uh, you will take my picture. Coming, old Ben. Coming! How about this pose? Featuring my photogenius profile. Excellent. Now, uh, watch the birdie. <laughs> Ready? Aim! Fire! Egad! Great balls of fire! That cannonball will ruin my perfect bear head! She, too bad. That little guy saved my life. Oh well, say the guy. Well, that's the way the cannonball bounces. I've been too blooming nice to that bear. With a keen house, a regular showplace. She, 
Yeah, so I'm getting out of here. Two can't play at this game. It can't sounds and all that rot. <laughs> I've had it! I've had it! Well, what's all the shouting about, huh? Would you say, sir, I needed a perfect bear head for my collection. Well, uh, why don't you say so? Maybe we can make a deal. Long last, Colonel Putt-Putt is happy. His collection is complete. He has his perfect bear head. Hey, Dad! Where's that infernal bear? Yauge! Yauge! Sheesh, for a short lunch. So, all right, I'm back to work already. At last, I've got my perfect bear head. Anywho, this beats working in a circus. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sonny can't resist cocoa puffs. Made with luscious real cocoa. Makes breakfast taste like chocolate. <laughs> What? What is a boy? Well, a boy, a boy is a dirty face, a baseball card, and a shoe to lace. A noisy splash across the day. But then a boy is built that way. With dirt on clothes that were just bought. His dinner's ready, but, but he is not. He teased his sister and lost his hat, and, and he pulled the tail of the neighbor's cat. But you know, a, a little boy, a little boy grows up some every day. And um, although he fails a little bit <laughs> along the way, he'll grow up your pride and joy. But first, he's got to be a boy. Right here is the guy that made the film and splashed through all of that water under my direction. My boy, the boy in the film, Keith. Beside him, the other guy here, the cello playing Roy. They're both my boys, so I know a little bit about what it is. And I hope you enjoy that. 
Well, let me say so. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys have been out in film and we've been out live a few times through the years. Your dad is a great guy. You know that. Well, just remember that, okay? So, well, uh, you guys are great. Okay? And you're he's, a good buddy. He's, he's bigger than I am. Oh, I gotta watch my And if you don't have friends, <laughs> if you don't have family, you don't have anything. So, kid, you stick close to your family, all right? Okay. Well, uh, thanks. Hey, what are we doing next? Hey, I think it's, uh... Well, who, which one of you guys uh, would like to introduce, uh, Lauren, why don't you introduce, uh, Professor Kitson, okay? Now, pretend that, wait a minute, hold it. Hold it, Alex, All right. stand by. Okay, you, <laughs> Casey, you be around, house, and, uh, let both of you guys introduce our next cartoon together, okay? <laughs> All right. Well, give us a little bit here, fellas. <laughs> Hey, we have a better day. Let's pretend. Hey, I got it. I got it. You pretend that you're Casey. All right, put on my coat. Stand up. Go out of the door. Pretend it's the opening of the program. You just got off the train. You're coming in. You're Casey. And you're around us, okay? All right. just invented a secret formula for making gold. Before you know it, I'll be a millionaire, maybe even a trillionaire. Even a dumb bird like you will be able to make real gold with this formula. <laughs> While it's cooking, watch this story about a man who was just like me. He loved gold, too. While searching for a shortcut from England to Asia, Captain Martin Frobisher's ship was battered by a severe storm, which blew it far into Arctic waters. There was very little food and water left, and the crew could no longer stand the biting cold. The sight of huge icebergs so close to the ship terrified them, and the men threatened Frobisher with mutiny unless he turned back. Frobisher decided to look for a place to land where he could find provisions. As they approached shore, a group of Eskimos in kayaks paddled toward their ship. Never having seen an Eskimo or a kayak before, they feared that they were being attacked by strange sea creatures who were half man and half boat. When they realized that they were not sea creatures but men in boats, they followed the Eskimos to the beach. Seeing the guns and swords, the Eskimos were in no mood for friendship. Thinking the Englishmen were about to attack, the Eskimos acted to protect themselves. Suddenly, and without warning, they charged at the astonished English in savage hand-to-hand -hand combat. When it was over, the Eskimos had captured five Englishmen and their longboats, leaving Frobisher with only 13 crewmen. Captain Frobisher was infuriated by the sight of his men being chased by the Eskimos. In a fit of wild rage, he leaned over the rail and lifted an Eskimo, kayak and all, out of the water and onto the deck of his ship. My golly, that Frobisher fellow sure had a terrible temper. I wouldn't like to get him mad. Wow. Frobisher's captured Eskimo was a sensation in England. The English had never seen an Eskimo. And by his appearance, they thought he was an Asian. This led them to believe that Frobisher had found the passage to Asia. On his next expedition, Frobisher spent more time searching for gold than in searching for a shortcut to Asia. As they walked inland over rough ground, Frobisher suddenly tripped over a rock. 
When he picked it up to examine it, he and his crew were amazed to find it covered with golden specks. Frobisher was certain that he had stumbled on a gold mine. To get the men to work hard at digging the ore, Frobisher promised them each a share of the fortune. In order to make room for the ore, the crew tossed all the cargo overboard. The excited crew dug day and night until they had taken hundreds of tons of ore from the earth. But when it seemed that the ship might sink from its heavy overload, the happy Englishman set sail for England. As soon as he arrived, Frobisher rushed happily to a chemist with a sample of his precious gold. He wanted to find out how much it was worth. Martin Frobisher was stunned by the chemist's report. After all he and his crew had gone through, what he thought was a fortune in gold turned out to be iron pyrites, otherwise known as fool's gold, just worthless dirt. If Frobisher had my formula, he could make his own gold. All he'd have to do is... Rack, forget that gold stuff. Get busy and invent me some new feathers before I freeze to death. Rack. My goodness, there's nothing worse than a cold parrot with a hot temper. <laughs> I, uh, you know, you always have fun with things like that. 
and it, that's okay, you know, but we don't put on anything nasty or anything like that, so it's not good to do that. But I'd like to just take a second here. I was at a, we're at a, a very nice party, a big party, uh, Christmas night. We had all of our relatives over for dinner, and then later that night we went to a Christmas party at a friend's house, and somebody stole my wife's coat. And whoever did that, I wish you would bring it back. It was very meaningful to her, and she worked hard to move for it. And uh, it, it, uh, it's a valuable coat, and, but it has a lot of meaning. So whoever stole my wife's coat on Christmas night, I wish you'd please bring it back. And there won't be any questions asked. And, uh, I don't know who did it, or we, and uh, just bring it back if you will. Okay. Well, right now, Let's take a look at Forky Pig, and then we'll have time to have a funny bit on some of the old bits on today, okay? Let's go. Forky Pig was a little Get some sleep. When Irish eyes are smiling, all the world seems bright and gay. Ah! Take that, you old cat. And when Irish eyes are smiling, sure they'll steal your heart. This keeps up. I uh, gotta get some sleep uh, this year. Y yes? Away! Uh, darn that old cat. I'll fix him this time, once and for all. Here it, kitty, 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 kitty. Here it, uh, pussy cat. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here, kitty. Baby, I'm the tree top. When 
you rang? What's going on around here? Somebody just threw this funny-looking rock through my window. Um, begging the Colonel's pardon, but that's no rock. It's a hand grenade. Oh, well, a grenade! Yep, those Gopher Indians you're trying to make soldiers out of are having grenade practice. You mean this thing might go off? Any minute. This is an outrage! Can't those Indians do anything right? They have ruined the rifle range, the obstacle course, and the drill field. Now this. Well, it was your idea to make soldiers out of them. And I will, too. Colonel Kit Coyote always succeeds. It's regulation. Anyway, I'm going to put them in a place where they can't get into any trouble. Where's that? In the kitchen. Uh-oh. All right, men, this is where you're going to work. And your work is very important. Remember, an army travels on its stomach. <laughs> what did he say? Him say army could go pretty far on your stomach. What? I think, uh, never mind that. Just make lunch. What's for lunch? Soup. <laughs> we make them special soup? How we do that? <laughs> you am genius. So black pepper, red pepper. Tomasco sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Meat. Now stir them up good. What did he say? Him say, soup's on. Bully. Bully. Uh, come, Sergeant. Very tasty. <laughs> Maybe you should forget the whole thing, Colonel. Those Indians just don't fit in the army. Nonsense, Sergeant. I'll make them fit. If they can't make soup, maybe they can bake biscuits. Now, it's very simple. Just flour and water and eggs and baking powder. Even you two should be able to do that. Now, get busy. Flour, water, eggs, baking powder. Oh, we use them gunpowder. You am genius. <laughs> you see, Sergeant, I told you they could do it. Perfect baking powder biscuits. Aha. <laughs> Get out! You're discharged. Get out! Out! <laughs> Those Indians finally got out of the army. But if I know them, it won't be long before they give the Colonel more trouble. So don't miss our next adventure. Yeah? Hey, kids. Let's take a look at this from General Mills. Catch that leprechaun. He's got lucky charms. They're magically delicious. Oh, I wish I have to be lucky charms. The old cereal with sweet surprises. Orange stars, yellow moons, pink hearts, green clovers. See? Magically delicious. They're back. I leap into this picture. Look, watch this. <laughs> nice doggy. Lucky charms with sweet surprises. See? Magically delicious.
Bionic Company. We'll be back right early tomorrow morning at 7 30. Right here tomorrow at 5 noon. Hope you'll be here. Okay, have a really nice day. Enjoy your vacation, everybody. It's a fun time. So,